Really quick, if you haven't seen my most recent episode, Anumori the Collector, the underrated commander Dak Tech, make sure you check that episode out first. Because this episode, well, is kind of like an extension of that one, and if you haven't seen that one, well, this one might not make all that much sense. Because on this episode, I'm going to be taking that Dak Tech and breaking the bank on it, taking the budget all the way up to $100. Regardless, that episode as well as this one come to you courtesy of Jared, who's been supporting this channel as a Golden Pig tier patron. I I truly couldn't do this without the support for amazing patrons like Jared. So again, Jared, thank you so much. And as a quick reminder for the deck, Jared chose Umori the Collector, focusing on Artifact Storm. Umori is a 4-5 ooze that costs 2 Golgari Golgari that can be a companion, but not in this case. And as enters Battlefield, choose a card type. Spells you cast the chosen type cost one less to cast. So yeah, Umori can be extremely effective, especially in reducing the cost of artifacts by taking them down from 1 down to 0. And yeah, we've got a ton of artifact creatures in this deck that we're going to be casting for free. Regardless, now let's jump into the cards that we're adding in and taking out for this Break the Bank. And with this Break the Bank, well, we are actually going to be making some massive investments into specific cards because these cards in this deck are game ending. A card like Phyrexian Altar, for example, is an artifact that costs three and it says sacrifice a creature at one mana of any color. Now, this card is $30 at this point, even with its most recent reprinting in Double Masters 2022. So it is a huge investment for this Break the Bank and takes up a lot of our upgrade budget. But again, with this card in play, we can have some really game-ending turns quite quickly with a deck like this. Again, free sacrifice outlets are very powerful just as they are in a deck like this. We have free sacrifice outlets that literally don't provide us any value outside of just being able to sacrifice creatures for free. Because, of course, we've got ways to benefit from our artifact creatures dying and hitting the graveyard. And yeah, by being able to just sacrifice those creatures for free, we can get those values for free. And, and of course, I mean, draw into further creatures that we can cast for free and then sacrifice for free. You see where this is going. But with an incredible sacrifice outlet like this, now on top of, again, being able to get that creature out for free, thanks to Amori, sacrificing it for free for some additional value, again, by drawing cards like a Grim Horror Specs or something like that, now we are getting mana for free. So yeah, a card like this can lead to some incredibly explosive turns very, very early by allowing us to just keep casting spell after spell after spell, because again, those free creatures that we are casting are essentially now just generating us mana. On top of all the other benefits that we are getting when we sacrifice them, again, there are going to be times where we're set up properly and we can draw multiple cards just by sacrificing one creature that we played for free. So now we're getting mana, you know, to cast more cards that we're drawing into that can probably help us get those creatures back, you know, whether into our hand or directly on the battlefield to sacrifice again for even more mana. And yeah, this can really help us storm off in absolutely no time. So again, although this card is $30 and it is a huge portion of our upgrade budget, it is well worth it. Speaking of which, yeah, now another big investment, one that is not quite as big as, you know, Phyrexian Altar. We've got Ashnod's Altar, which comes in around like $12 or so, but still, even with a massive investment like this, it is well worth it with this upgrade. It's an artifact that costs three and it's a free sacrifice outlet. So yeah, basically the exact same thing as Phyrexian Altar, except instead of adding one man of any color, it's going to add colorless colorless. So two mana. Now, in some situations, this is going to be better than Phyrexian Altar, but in other ways, you know, obviously there are going to be times where getting that mana of any color is going to be more beneficial. Still, being able to sacrifice our creatures that we're again casting for free to just generate us two mana every single time we do so on top of all the other benefits that we're getting is absurd, which of course can lead to some incredibly explosive in game ending turns. And yeah, I mean, if we get this out into play and draw into at some point in combination, you know, with a Phyrexian Altar, it's basically going to be impossible to stop us because the amount of mana that we can generate can, of course, just lead to us casting whatever spells we want to be able to cast. And and yeah, I mean, keep in mind also, and I probably should have mentioned this with, you know, Phyrexian Altar as well. We've got plenty of ways to make a ton of creature tokens with this deck as well. Again, we sacrifice one of our creatures. We make a creature token with many you know instances of doing that, and we can sacrifice those creatures for extra free mana, too. 
So there are going to be times when we sacrifice one creature, essentially, you know, a non-token creature, that we get, you know, a token creature as well, and we essentially are getting four mana for just that one creature, which we, again, cast for free and got additional value from. This can just be, you know, a massive ritual effect, essentially, in a way, and just, again, lead to some very explosive turns that can get really, really out of hand. And of course, in Commander, Redundancy can be a very powerful thing. So yeah, we're also going to be running Krark Clan Ironworks, which is not quite as expensive as Phyrexian Altar. It is more expensive than Ashnod's Altar. It is a big investment. But again, for an Artifact Storm deck like this one, this card can be incredible at, you know, it's around $25 or so. But it's going to be well worth it. It's an artifact for four that says sacrifice an artifact, add colorless colorless. So this one is very similar to Ashnod's Altar, works in basically the exact same way in a lot of scenarios. I mean, we can't, you know, sacrifice our, you know, non-artifact creatures, but we've got, you know, the vast majority of creatures in our deck are going to be artifact creatures, so we can basically, again, sacrifice them for two mana apiece to lead to some incredibly explosive turn. And again, although these upgrades have been expensive ones, they are ones that can essentially just be, well, game-ending threats the second they come down and you can just lead again to those turns that we can just go off. So the investment is definitely going to be worth it in utilizing our upgrades for these. Now, when it comes to the cards that we are taking out of this deck, like I always like to say, just because we are taking cards out does not mean that they are bad cards. It just means that the upgrades that we are adding in are going to be more efficient or more effective with this upgraded build. So we are going to be taking out Nim Shambler, Varal's the Scar Striped, and Mind Slash. All of these are sacrifice outlets as well. And yeah, I mean, there's just no comparing sacrifice outlets like these to the sacrifice outlets that we are adding in. The ones that we are adding in can, of course, just be much more impactful by again just giving us a bunch of free mana to work with out of nowhere. Again, I'd like to reiterate, these are not bad cards. These cards can be incredibly effective in a lot of situations, but again, with our upgrades, well, we have to take some cards out. And again, like I mentioned, with this Break the Bank episode, we took our upgraded budget all the way up to $100, and we come in just underneath that at $99.95. Now, keep in mind that this estimated cost does include basic lands at $0.10 cents a piece, so if you already have those basics, well, there's some extra savings for you there. And speaking of extra savings, you might be able to save even more by buying this deck on TCG Player and utilizing heavily played and damaged cards, which, of course, need a home too. Though, do keep in mind this estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.